Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. It's a frosty morning, let me tell you what. We are up bright and early. We are in Benton, Pennsylvania at Benton Antique Store. And I'm seeing another place right across the street. Let's, let's flip you around and check it out. But for now, we are here. Let's get inside, see if we can't find anything for resale or for collecting. Again, we are in a small town in rural Pennsylvania, so here's hoping. I've never been here before. I've never been across the street. We're probably going to do two videos. I'll dedicate one to each place, but okay, here we go. Let's do this. I mean, hey, I see a ceramic Christmas tree already. Here's our entrance. Let's get inside and see if we can film, shall we? Oh, hey, look at that old singer in the window. Ooh, she looks cute. Okay. Well, guys, we were obviously able to film. Now, this is a beautiful historic building. It was originally built in 1902. Now, as was pointed out to me, the light fixtures are not original. They are from Lowe's. However, they were wonderfully picked out. Look at that great staircase. The staircase was done um, semi-recently. It is vintage, uh, but beautiful craftsmanship there. And again, the floors are original 1902. How fantastic is that? This very much, I think oftentimes when we say antique store, the kind of vibe, the aesthetic is, is what you picture. Uh, they really did live up to it. Very friendly staff. There was, there was a lot of different items to choose from. They weren't all antiques. We did have a lot of vintage, as you will see. Here we have some beautiful carnival. We've got some yellow depression glass. Of course, we have milk glass. Here we've got some ruby, ruby glass, pardon me, cut to clear. Again, that is flashed glass. It is a layer of ruby glass that is flashed over clear, and then it is cut to reveal that clear underneath. There were just all kinds of nooks and crannies. Look at that old black and white photo back there of Granny. I didn't even see that in real life. I'm just now observing it. It was such a fun place to be. Again, the overall aesthetic, it was just wonderful. It was, it was a fantastic place to be in. Um, and again, I, I just want to reiterate how important it is to support a small or local business. Um, not only are we supporting Benton Antique Store, but we are supporting every vendor that we buy from within here. And at the end of the day, we are all a community and uh, it very much is a supply chain. So it's super important, again, that we make sure that we don't forget that deals can be had in antique stores. Now I am seeing some beautiful jewelry and you will see later on in the video, there is quite a bit of jewelry to choose from. A lot of the pieces are very fairly priced even for reselling. So definitely a collector's dream in here. I don't know a whole lot about jewelry. I really buy on the aesthetic. I, it, it, that piece has to jump out and say, Hey, I'm the one take me home. And that is how I, I go off of jewelry. I don't know makers. I don't know historic value. So again, it's all off of aesthetics. Now, speaking of aesthetics, I saw these beautiful, the vendor does have them as Murano. I am going to call them art glass. It was a set. I got both for $30. Obviously it is in the amber. And here we are seeing another example of flashed glass. You are seeing the gorgeous gold flaking, uh, in the bowl uh, words struggling. <laughs> um, unlike a lot of the more inexpensive art glass, it was spread out throughout the piece. So it very much looked like almost fairy glitter, if you will. There, we're getting a peek back further into the store. And of course, we're going to head down there in just a moment. But before we do, of course, that little black light display did catch my eye. Here I'm seeing a, what I believe is a Toby picture that seems to be have turned into a lamp. So that was interesting. 
okay, we are on the back of the case and it was open for us to get into. So I was super excited about that. The first thing that caught my eye was this covered sugar dish. It is in fact a Hazel Atlas and I'm going to flip it over and we'll see the marking there on the bottom. I wanted to pick that up. It was only $14. And then I was like, what else do we have? We have some salt and pepper shakers. Those are all right. Um, $12 again, collector and a reseller. Very, very friendly. Um, we did find some satin Vaseline glass. It is a hobnail toothpick holder, only $9.50. I definitely picked that up. Um, I was seeing the, like the measuring cup here. Um, I kind of regret not getting it. I have a tendency not to go for the very utilitarian. And I know you may be saying, well, Michael, you know, you just got a sugar dish. But again, there are different purposes. But, you know, Again, you could use the measuring cup for different things. Again, $12, that is very collector friendly or reseller friendly. Again, just proving, small example, that you can find really good deals in an antique mall. Now, we did see this Vaseline. It is satin. It's marked as is. And I was like, well, what's wrong with it? And then I identified that it did, in fact, have a small chip right here on the ruffle. I looked at the piece a little bit further and there were knobs in there. And what upset me was it was the base of a fairy lamp. It unfortunately was missing its shade. I have to move that tag off there. It freaked me out being on the light bulb. I didn't want to catch a fire here. Um, so I was, I was very sad about that. Uh, such is life. Now I do see this beautiful amber glass decanter. Reach, Michael. <laughs> This does have silver overlay and turning it over, we do see that it has a made in Italy sticker. It was priced at, are we ready for it? Are we ready? Only $7 and 50 cents. Now there is a little bit of wear to the silver overlay. It obviously was used. Um, so I think that that is fantastic. Again, an amazing deal on all of those pieces. Now, I do believe this is an example of actual acro agate. Unfortunately, the sticker was over top of it. And if you are unaware, it is slag glass. However, acro agate is an actual company. It's not a type of glass. It's very much like saying chapstick. Um, chapstick is a brand, though we immediately think of it as lip balm. Now, I am seeing some art glass dishes in here. Um, all kinds. Oh goodness. Look at the confetti. It was beautiful. I wanted that confetti so bad, but it was priced at $65. Now for a collector, that is an extraordinarily reasonable price. It is a beautiful example. I mean, it was clear. It had a smooth bottom that again, that beautiful confetti style to it. It was, it was joyful. It was a joyful, joyful piece next to it. A little bit more reasonable, um, was at priced at $28. It did have some Bulacante in it, but again, I thought it was just a quote unquote art glass. If, if you know what I mean. Now we do find this one. It very much reminded me of a turtle shell. Um, it was priced at only $18. It did have a very smooth polished bottom to it. It did. Um, but I just, the green and the amber, it's not the most wildly desirable color. Here we are seeing this mint green, uh, again, with Bulacante. Now, the bubbles were a little sporadic throughout the piece. Um, I wasn't really digging the application. And then I thought, you know what? If this glows, I'm going to get it. I'll get it if it glows. And we just happened to be by the black light display. Unfortunately... It didn't glow. So back into the cabinet, it went. It was still a beautiful piece at $18. Again, very collector friendly. We are headed now back to the back of the store on the first floor. We are going to head upstairs in just a little bit. Of course, I've got to give you guys a glimpse of the beams as well as the wood planked ceiling. Um, Again, the vibe and the aesthetic, it's so fun to be in such a historic building and being looking for antiques and vintage. It really does add to the experience. Now, the numbers on the floor, there was it was used for chain cutting. They would pull the chain out and pull it to its appropriate footage and then cut it. And that is how they would measure it. So that was a cute little tidbit of information. 
A lot of good things here. I'm seeing some Christmas, always loving Christmas year round. Now we do see this adorable little, I am assuming made in Japan bear. He was priced at 450. Um, I decided not to get him simply because I have so very much, so very much. <laughs> Um, the little Santa cup, it was actually a hard plastic priced again at 450, both pieces, extraordinarily collector friendly. Now we did see down at the bottom here, we've got a paper mache Santa. He looks a little spooked. He is having a day. Uh, I wanted to check him out here a little bit closer to see maybe if he had a manufacturer sticker on him. What exactly was he? Was he just a paper mache Santa? He was priced at $34.99. Um, it wasn't really where I wanted it to be as a reseller, though I will say, especially now that we are entering into the holiday season, I do think for that piece that there was still room for resale, but I was just a little too unsure to really bite the bullet on that one. Obviously, we're heading in a little bit further into the booth. You know, once you see those ooh, items, you definitely want to take your time and check things out a little bit further. I saw this adorable little Santa mug. It is a Commodore. That is what the sticker down below you are seeing. And I love the little holly handle. It's absolutely adorable. Now I do spot this, what is referred to by collectors as a cricket pixie at only $4.50. I definitely snatched him up. That was an amazing deal. Again, a lot of the pieces that I'm picking up so far, you know, $15 for those Murano glass, $4.50 for the pixie, what, $12 for that sugar? Those are thrift store prices. A lot of the thrift stores that I do go to, you know, they do have their quote unquote premium items and they do price those things at the exact same price. You know, depending on the area, can you walk in and can you find a, a Hazel Atlas uranium glass, you know, sugar dish for 99 cents? Of course you can. Um, the odds of finding that are slim to none. Therefore, when I go to an antique mall, I know that things have been curated. I know I am paying, ultimately, I am paying for the convenience of being able to go in and know not only now that I am doing YouTube, that I'm going to be able to share that experience with you, but as a reseller, that I'm going to find things that are of value. And if you give it a little time, patience, and practice, you are going to find things that will still generate a profit for you. Now, this was an unusual, it's a very mid-century sculpt. I am unfamiliar with the manufacturer to the piece, but I just absolutely loved that ivory creamy glaze to it. Now we are headed back even further into the first floor store, into the first floor store, into the first floor <laughs> of the store. It's late when I'm doing this voiceover, you guys. I'm a little tired, not going to lie. Um, again, as I said earlier, you are going to see a tremendous amount of jewelry. Again, if you are a fan and you have the opportunity to stop into Benton Antique Mall, I highly recommend it. You're not going to be disappointed. As I said earlier, I am not overly familiar with a lot of jewelry. Now I do spot this elephant and he is what I believe is a, like a jelly belly. He was priced at $15. Again, that is very fair for that piece. Not necessarily what I would want it to be for resale. Saw that amazing little enameled hummingbird. We've got a little peacock there in the back. I am seeing that very art deco leaping gazelle. Ooh, Kind of wish I would have seen that. I don't think I saw it in real life. But again, we've got all kinds of jewelry in here. We have some examples of the Christmas jewelry. I do really like this snowflake at $4. I think that that was very fair. Um, again, it's just one of those things where I'm like, but is this a good piece of jewelry? I mean, just because I like it doesn't necessarily mean that there is resale value to it. Um, you know, $4 could be 
a fair price for it. And here we're seeing a snowflake that is $5. Again, I like the aesthetics, but I'm so unsure as to the value of a lot of costume jewelry that, you know, is $9 going to break the bank? No, it's not. Of course it's not. But it's still money wasted at the end of the day. $5 for the little wreath here. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, $14 for the three pieces. And if you were to sell them as a lot, I think that is where I have generated more profit is, is by putting things in small lots. And that typically is what's going to generate you a profit. So now thinking back hindsight, right? 2020. Um, yeah, I probably could have gotten those two snowflakes and that wreath and still made a tidy little profit on it. But again, in the moment, um, it just wasn't that, wasn't that thing that was speaking to me. Now I am seeing these, what I do believe are antique. They are marked Germany. Again, it's one of those things where I really like it, um, but I don't know anything about it. <laughs> So I'm like, well, I think you're priced really reasonable. It's very cute. Again, it's one of those things where because I am selling direct on YouTube live, you kind of get a feeling for what is and isn't necessarily going to sell. Um, and it's not to say that there isn't, you know, a handful of people out there that would have absolutely loved that and would have paid more than the $18, but I have to go on what I see weekly right? You can't always count on everybody being at every sale and the five people that really want it are going to be there. So you really got to try to concentrate on what it is that people are looking for and the things that you're really selling at a premium. These are, this is an attempt <laughs> at a jewelry Christmas tree. Unfortunately, there was a lot of styrofoam that was exposed. Um, so we did decide to go ahead and leave them there. That's honestly why we didn't get to up close and personal. I will say though, um, if it's something that you were looking at doing so far as a craft at $40, it would have made an excellent base. Here again, we're seeing some lovely enameled flowers in the red, white, and blue, very patriotic. That did come with a set of clip-ons. We're going to peek underneath here. Oh, look at that matching necklace. Again, we're seeing that red, white, and blue, the floral, the uh, matching clip on earrings. Again, a lot of jewelry, folks. And I don't know if I'm torturing you by showing it and you're screaming at the TV. Buy it, buy it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Here we have a really interesting piece of clear glass. You all know or should know by now. And if it's your first time here, thank you for viewing. Um, but I do, I am a fan. I advocate for the clear glass. This was, to me, it very much was reading in a very art deco style. She was extraordinarily long. Um, it was priced at, I know, wait for it. It was priced at just $12. And you're like, why didn't you get it? Um, I was a little concerned about the shipping. Um, you know, if I was going to keep it $12, a deal. I mean, come on folks. That thing was nearly two feet tall. It was a ruffled, stretched, molded vase. Beautiful. Look at this stained glass. Sorry. I had to view this. We, we, I had to capture this and we are about to head upstairs, but that clear glass vase for $12. Come on. That's, that's a deal. So again, the stairs were remodeled or redone. Um, however, there is still excellent craftsmanship to it. They left the nails exposed. I love that they left the knots in the wood. You know, they really didn't try to make it into something that it shouldn't have been. Now here we are seeing this very interesting dancing man with his original fiberglass is that fiberglass? Yes, it is fiberglass lampshade. A lot of mid-century stuff up here. I was really impressed. Look at that duck TV lamp. And speaking of TV, look at that thing. My Lord, that was one of those ones where you played too long and then like the pictures would leave like a shadow if you took them off the... <laughs> Oh no, we're about to relive a regret. 
Ugh. I mean, I don't regret this, but I do regret. Oh, you can kind of see it there in the corner. Ugh. Sometimes the the pain and the suffering of rewatching a video is real, folks. You have to see things again that you were just hemming and hawing. And let me tell you what, I hemmed and hawed over this next thing for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, there wasn't, as you saw, a whole lot on the upstairs. However, yeah. Ugh, look at this beauty. It is metal. It is only $25. And it, it's, it's like a metal. I don't know. Like you would have seen it in a department store, right? From like the 50s. I just absolutely adored it. But I was like, where are you going to put it? <laughs> What are you going to do with it, though, Michael? Were you going to hang it from the ceiling? Like, really? I mean, where there is a will, there's a way. And definitely for Christmas, I would have loved to have it out. But, yeah, I'm staring at it again. But year-round storage. Oof. Here we have the Pixie cookie jar. This one, unfortunately, had a broken little thing to its hat thing, is what we're going to call it. So we did not elect to pick him up. Well, guys, here is everything that I did get. I am very pleased. While, yes, it is a small haul, I still think that it is a mighty haul. And I am really glad that I stopped into Benton today. We're going to wrap it up outside. Well, that was it, guys, here at Benton Antique Mall in Benton, Pennsylvania. You guys, I absolutely, it was a darling store. It was full of a lot of characters, some beautiful ambiance. The staff, Diane, Thank you so much, Pat. Thank you so much, Cindy. It was such a pleasure to meet all of you ladies. I really look forward to coming back. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed too. And until next time, as always, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye guys.